A new report by an independent panel is highly critical of how Japan's leaders acted in the hours and days after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It calls their response off the cuff and too late. The six experts on the panel base their findings on interviews with 300 people, including top-ranking Japanese and American officials. They spent months studying the response to the Fukushima accident, which happened after last year's March 11th earthquake and tsunami. They tried to interview authorities at Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the plant, but TEPCO turned down their request. The direct causes of the nuclear accident were the unpreparedness of Tokyo Electric Power for a serious accident and the government's lack of a sense of responsibility. The report blames the government's response on its failure to anticipate the combined impact of a quake and a tsunami. That rendered this crisis management manual useless. The report says the problem was compounded by politicians' lack of basic legal knowledge. The document also points to delays in providing the Prime Minister's office with accurate information, as well as insufficient support by advisors. It urges immediate debate on improving the situation. The report condemns the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency for failing to give prof professionals proper safety training. It says the agencies could not draw up plans to put the Fukushima plant under control because of a lack of skill and personnel. The report blames TEPCO for initially making things worse at the facility, not better. TEPCO workers did not immediately switch to an alternative cooling system after realizing the emergency condenser was not working. Then, they took too long to start the venting procedure to avert a major crisis. The committee chairman says the investigation has revealed what was going inside the prime minister's office and elsewhere at the time of the accident. The chairman also says Japan's organizations are ill-prepared to deal with a crisis, a problem that needs to be fixed as soon as possible. Members of an independent panel spent months studying the response to the disaster last March in northeastern Japan. They interviewed 300 people, including senior Japanese and U.S. officials. The report says the Japanese government ignored the advice of U.S. authorities. Panel members say the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission established guidelines after 9-11 for restoring reactors disabled by a terrorist attack. They say the U.S. Commission explained the guidelines to Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency on at least two occasions. And the commission asked Japanese officials to improve the anti-terrorism measures at their nuclear facilities. But the independent panel says the agency did not adopt the U.S. recommendations. If the advice had been taken in, there would have been less damage to the nuclear plant. That shows the stubborn nature of Japan's nuclear industry. The government panel has opposed, proposed setting up two separate facilities to help local communities respond to future nuclear crises. This comes after an off-site emergency response center failed to function properly during the Fukushima meltdown. Rising levels of radiation and the impact of the earthquake and tsunami prevented local officials from gathering at the center about five kilometers away from the Fukushima plant. A working panel of the Nuclear Safety Commission submitted a list of recommendations on Tuesday. It proposes reinforcing the emergency response system by creating two separate facilities. One would serve as a nerve center to give local residents information and evacuation instructions. It would be set up in the prefectural office building sufficiently away from the plant to avoid the risk of radiation. The second center would serve as a front base to monitor radiation levels and conduct evacuations. The government will set new national guidelines following the panel's final recommendations due out early March. People in Japan have been reading through a damning report on how officials mishandled the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. We gave you details earlier this week on an independent panel's findings. Members of the private policy group Rebuild Japan Initiative Foundations spent more than six months interviewing 300 people including then Prime Minister Naoto Kan and American officials. They found the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company were ill-prepared to deal with the crisis at Fukushima. The investigation painted a clear picture of distrust, a lack of communication, and an absolute confusion among the main players. The Rebuild Japan Initiative Foundation is a new group. 
A team of 30 university professors, lawyers, and journalists conducted this Fukushima Daiichi investigation. One of the panel's executive members joins me now. Akihisa Shiozaki is a lawyer. Mr. Shiozaki, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. You sat on the panel that uh, they heard directly from ministers and bureaucrats who dealt with the disaster firsthand. I know hindsight is always 2020, but what do you think was the biggest mistake they made? If I were to summarize Japan's response to the nuclear power accident in Fukushima in three words, it would be crude, reactionary, but lucky. A 14-meter tsunami, a full-scale station blackout, none of the key parties were prepared at any level for something like that. We found out that a small group of politicians became overly involved in the technical management of the on-site accident management. Unfortunately, however, this political intervention was rarely effective, triggered confusion, and at some times, extremely dangerous. One of the things that surprised me was that your team found out that the leaders secretly considered evacuating Tokyo as the worst case scenario and the seriousness of the situation was never made public and that caused other countries to lose trust in Japan. What do you think, what do you think Japan should do to communicate in times of a crisis like this? The Japanese government failed miserably in their risk communication. The worst case scenario that you just mentioned was commissioned was never disclosed and was completely deleted from all government records. The government was late to disclose speedy forecast of radiation. They only provided vague explanation on the risk of low-level radiation exposure. The J Prime Minister's uh, government ministry lacked the fundamental capacity to make English announcements the world. This constant pattern of reluctance to disclose crisis information resembles a pattern of elite panic syndrome, which is a pattern where government elites become afraid of disclosing crisis information out of fear that that disclosure itself might trigger a panic. Your group panel is a private group. Did you have, in that respect, did you have hard time conducting your investigation? When we talked with these interviewees, many of them told us that they were providing their story not because out of an authority or a legal obligation to do so, but because of a sense of responsibility to society and the global community. They also emphasized that they wanted someone independent, truly independent, to conduct this investigation. Some people in Japan want to change the government's energy policy, but the business committee says they cannot do without nuclear power. Mr. Shiozaki, what challenges do you think the government and the public need to overcome to push this debate forward? I think the first question now we need to do, we need to ask ourselves, is now that we don't have the myth anymore, can we start an honest dialogue on the risk of nuclear power? Can we talk about the worst case scenarios that underlie the benefits that we receive from nuclear power. Starting that conversation is the first step for us to make any dis decision or discussion on whether or not to continue the use of nuclear energy in the future. All right, uh, Akisa Shiozaki was, is, was one of the members of uh, the investigative panel. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and good luck with your mission. Thank you very much.